Good morning, everyone. It's Lynn from Lynn's Grass Designs. <clears throat> Coming by today with a little bit of a different one. These are some of the gears that I poured in the last video, I believe. Um, this is the J. Diction Resin Crete. This is a, it's just chipboard. Uh, it's a chipboard cut out. It's a mermaid, obviously. A steampunk mermaid. This one is a steampunk seahorse. And I've got this, um, it was a tin, my husband got a wallet for Christmas in. Okay. <laughs> so the mermaid will sit, something like this, I'm a little worried about her arm right here, but. We'll deal with that. Okay, the mermaid. <laughs> then I've got this one is just seashells mold, and this one is uh, the kelp, the sea fan, the whatever, coral, whatever you want to call it. And then this one. This one is a Stampin' Up. Let me see if it's got a name. <laughs> Not really. Okay, so this one is Stampin' Up. It's the um, seahorse one. <laughs> I'm going to do... Um, the two fish, I believe, and maybe, maybe, it just depends on how easy they come out, I haven't actually tried the stamp it up with the resin crete, I don't see why it wouldn't work, um, polymer clay, paper clay, resin, they all pop right out, so, I'm gonna do that. I don't I don't even have room to set that down. Oh my gosh. Do y'all have that problem? Just a totally unruly craft room? Mine mine should go on a timeout. Let's get on. Let's get on with the resin crete, shall we? Okay, now I've mixed up another fifty grams of the resin crete with fifteen grams of the water. Thoroughly mixed it. Okay, now I'm going to do this um, bone shaker mold just to give it a try. Okay. Just gonna do a couple more of this. I don't know what you call it.
Alright, that one might have been a waste, but... Let it flow out a little bit more. Alright. <clears throat> I'll give these 30 minutes to set. And then I'll be back. Okay, now a little demolding. I really don't want to flex the mold. Here we go. Hmm, a few air bubbles. But I like that. It's nice and white. Alright, so we'll give that one a try in another video. This one... Is one we need for the project. Alright. Okay, that one. Got a few of these. I'm gonna whoa, whoa, love how that just fell right out. Cause that was what I had concern with. These really two demold quite easy when they don't break. Now, I've never tried the gears in one of these type of molds, so I don't have high hopes. But we're going to see if by just okay, loosening the mold all the way around. I was hoping it would just fall out like the first starfish did. Well, there we go. Not sure how it got down, but hey, one of the fish just fell out. That was sweet. Another fail. Oh, another glue. <laughs> okay, the resin creed in these type of molds is questionable. Sometimes they just fall right out, and then other times. When they tend to have a a center, so to speak, they get caught around it. Now they shouldn't on this one. Oh. But it didn't matter. Come on. I used this mold, I want it out. There we go. Oh, 
That one will just go, well, maybe mostly it'll just go, eh, or not. We'll save the bigger bits. See if we can't use those. Alright. Now the, the starfish got a little... A little, uh... Out of shape there. But that was just using the last of the resin. Alright, now I just need to paint all of these with some black gesso and also give the tin. I want to show you first. Oh my goodness. I'm going to give the tin, I'm going to give it a coat of black gesso on the outside and a coat of white gesso on the inside. Alright, I don't think y'all need to watch paint dry, so I'm going to do that off the of camera, <laughs> so I'll be right back. Okay, now while the rest of that black gesso is drying, <clears throat> I'm in a bit of a toss up here. I want the... You don't really call it texture, but I want the <laughs> texture of the cardboard to stand out. In other words, I don't want to slap a coat of paint on it that will cover up the cardboard. I know that sounds really strange. But because of these little details, I want them to kind of stand out a bit. So my first thought was, I've got these vivid ultra metallics. By color art. Um, and if you don't shake them, <laughs> the separated part will give you that look I'm talking about. But then, of course, it struck in my head, what an idiot you are. Why not just use alcohol ink? So that's what we're going to do. This one is the Ranger Sailboat Blue. This one is the Pinata Baja Blue. This one is the Pinata Teal. Now, all that being said, I want to try to kind of leave her hair a golden color. Uh, as well as this little gear right here, and maybe the end of her tail. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to start with what I think will be the lightest blue but now that I said that I want to be sure it's the lightest blue well I do not mean to do that I do think it will be the lightest blue. I'm going to take and drop a drop on my desk. Then I'm going to give it a squirt of 91% alcohol. Drop 
just because I'm worried about not having enough. <laughs> Alright. Now I know this is going to take a while. And you can fast forward. I'm surprised at how um, green that is. But of course once it dries... Trying to pick up that black. Alright, now, I'm just going to give that a few minutes, and we'll see how it's going to turn out. It is impossible not to get it on you. Just saying. But see what I was talking about? I just want the cardboard to kind of show through a little bit. So... Now we're going to go with the uh, Baja Blue. I may not use the teal but I may
Now I'm going to paint with the... I forgot. True Metals Autumn Flame. Any, any, any copper color would do. If you can open it. Why you always have a pair of pliers handy? <clears throat> now I'm just going to paint all of the gears this same base color. Okay. And yes, I'm sure I'll get it all over myself. And it's not that I'm a messy crafter, truly. It's just that I'm a, a paint stand. <laughs> I'd rather just touch it and get it over with. My, my hands will wash. I promise. That is a pretty color. If not a little sloppily painted. There you go. Now I'm not, I'm not worrying about the edges or anything. I am going to go back. And do some embossing powder and maybe some metallic waxes and we're just gonna have some fun okay once again it's like watching paint dry I know you don't necessarily need to watch me paint all this. Especially when you get too much paint on your brush. <laughs> Which I definitely just did. human paint stand that's how I got all black and then that's how I got all blue and don't know the rest right now I'll be copper or true metals autumn flame <laughs> I realize when you're coming up with paint. <laughs> Not everybody can just name paint copper. We would all eventually have a drawer or a shelf full of copper. We do anyway, but it's just called something different. Sorry if I was off camera for that one. Alright, I'll finish these, and then I'll start on the, those, <laughs> and then I'll be back. Alright, now I've got, these uh, are Ranger embossing powders from the Ancient Gold Collection. This one's the Princess Gold. This one is the tarnished gold. It's the one I use the most. 
And this one is the... Oh, this one actually is... Right. Put my glasses on for that. Oh, embossing powder. <laughs> Silver. So, I'm sure any embossing powders you want to use would work. I'm going to start with the tarnished gold. Alright. <clears throat> and where I want this, <laughs> obviously, is on the points of her tail. Oh. Untangle my cord somewhat. Which I'm gonna have to do a better job than that, y'all. Alright, now. Now once it melts, you have you have to watch heating it too much because it will uh, the plastic in it will it'll reabsorb right into your cardboard. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Decisions, decisions. Oh, I want my embossing one. Okay, this is uh, the WoW embossing pen that I've had way too long and it really probably doesn't have much left to it. Maybe. I'm going to do it while it's still as damp as it's ever going to be. <laughs> eh. Sort of. Kind of, sort of.
Okay, no, I didn't think that would stick, but it did. Now the hair. I really want to do the hair with the embossing pad, but Okay, that's just the first part of her hair. <clears throat> Luckily, I had just <laughs> cleaned my glass. Else I would not dare contaminate my embossing powder. apologize first of all that's just how long my embossing gun cord is so if I'm off camera I do apologize mm, I think I'm just gonna continue on with this Alright. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do want to kind of wipe her face clear and just make sure it doesn't have any.
see how it kind of gives that effect of uh, layers to her hair just because I did that in layers. <laughs> I did two layers around her face and then just the one layer on the rest. Oh, I really like that. Okay. Now, we're going to do some embossing powder to these as well. Just different color. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Now, I'm going to attempt this. <laughs> Okay, now I covered that tail pretty much completely. The rest of this, I really kind of just want to hit and miss kind of coverage. <laughs> oh, hush. <laughs> it's hard to pick up. Ooh. Sorry, y'all. Hmm. That's my Sims running in the background. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Now. <clears throat> I did not intend to make that all tarnished gold. So, I don't know how that happened. But, because I grabbed the tarnished gold instead of the silver. That was probably not a smart thing to do. Because now I got embossing ink all over my paper. My God, that is gorgeous. Yeah. 
if I can pick it up. That silver is so bright and shiny. Okay, I'll like to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm liking it. Alright. Yeah. It's generally impossible to set everything aside when you got stuff that's delicate like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm gonna go on and do these gears if I can hold on to them. Alright, now. Mm -hmm. Just gonna give this a try. Alright, that's kind of what I wanted. <laughs> Not having all this stuff in my way. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. what I want. I'm going to do a little bit more with the gold too, but I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, putting a little silver on these. Yeah. And then I'll be back. Okay, this is what I'm thinking about right here. So, on the bottom, looks like these two bigger gears. There's one on top. There's one second. These go on first. This is a fabric tack, which is a very transparent. <laughs> Uh, I know that, um, uh-huh, 3D matte gel would work better, or quicker, but I'm just going for a transparent, hey, hey. Okay, now I'm just going to stick the glue bottle and let it dry. 
I'm gonna stick the glue bottle and the embossing powder. <laughs> if I didn't show that, what I put on the tail is the African gold out of that same antique gold line. And that is the lapis lazuli from the Judikins line. Now the tail is definitely off. Okay, now I'm just going to take the metallic waxes. These are the um, Antique Brilliance line. This one is the Amethyst Magic. Lucky Emerald. Mystic Turquoise. And then I've got a gold and silver. This is an antique gold and a silver to do on the gears. Okay. This is what we decided on. <clears throat> Alright, now, I went with these because they're a more uh, muted color on the, on the black. As you can see, the brown antiquing uh, coming to the surface from where I've never touched it, actually. I'm gonna get under my nails. Okay. And now I'm going with this because I want the background to stay <laughs> background. I don't want it to overtake the little shadow box. Oh, that is really pretty. Let's see what else do I need? Purple. Let's do this. Now, using these waxes, I could, I can let this dry, just only takes a few minutes, and then go back and hit it with some silver. Um, I really, I really want this red, but I just don't have a red. This purple is gooey. It always has been. I don't know what it is about purple, but the purples are gooey. the bottom all right put it back on the purple now you can tell just by the sound that these are very fragile so, I'm thinking the shadow box was probably a good call. Because that way they won't be handled or anything. Alright. Now. That's going to go fine. So, let's do that. Thank you. 
is that? A large chunk of glitter. Where did that come from? <sighs> I don't know. a steampunk fish. This one is very delicately textured, so it doesn't really catch much. Sorry for the silence. <laughs> okay, that was it with the colors now. Now my goal on these is to like put both colors kind of like on the mermaid how her uh, her colors she has lots of colors okay all I did was all I did was water down some Guatemalan green and some of the mystic blue. And then I sprayed it, sorry. <laughs> Then I, I'm just going to dry it. Okay. Now, I put a coat of gloss varnish on everything. Everything. I kind of regret putting it on her body. The uh, embossing powder areas, I, that was fine, but... I don't like the um, gloss of her body, so I may go back. Wow. Uh, yeah. 
I may go back and try to put some uh, matte varnish on just her body, but I'll do that later. All right, and then I glued, these are just some scraps of broken polymer clay to raise this up a little bit. It's not much, but. So I'm gonna do something kind of like this. I may tilt that. Just a bit, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's get to gluing, though. And we'll figure it out. So, I got hot glue going. If it's going to work for me this morning. And it evidently isn't. I think I, I have no evidence for this, but I think what happens is I am prone to leaving my glue gun plugged in. I know I shouldn't do that, but sometimes I forget. And when you do that and you leave a glue stick in it, it kind of changes the property of the glue stick or something i don't know but until that glue stick is removed it won't work right so i'm gonna try that and we'll see okay so that definitely worked while my camera battery charged i did um do the matte finish as you can tell I'm going to show you this Ginger from the Blue Bottle Tree actually turned me on to this it's the golden polymer varnish with UVLS I don't know. okay sorry about that y'all it was a nightmare my camera completely didn't charge. I don't know why. But now it is. I was trying to say. Ginger from Blue Bottle Tree is the one that recommended this. It's the, pol it's the golden polymer varnish with UVLS. I don't know what that means. It's the matte one. This stuff is completely matte. You can see that took that back to exactly the way it was. It works on polymer clay, resin, mixed media crap. It works literally on everything. I love this stuff. If you've got something polymer clay that you accidentally put a gloss varnish on and then hated it, put this on there and you will not know that you ever put a gloss varnish on it. I even use this when I'm swelliganting. Mm. So, it, like I said, it just is completely matte. It just is. <laughs> All right. Now, like I said before, that did fix my glue gun. Now that I've said that, it's been plugged in all night again. <clears throat> My husband came home literally while the camera was charging. So I did not have a chance to get back to y'all.
right? I'll be right back again. Okay, now this is the glue gun, the glue stick that I took out and just cut it off. You see what I mean? It completely fixes the problem. Oh, come on. Alright. Now we're getting there. Okay, now. Oh, come on. There we go. I know I'm not the only one that hates glue strings. I really know I'm not. Oh, I really don't. Um, give me a minute. Y'all, I'm so sorry. Y'all know how you get carried away. Okay, kind of covered up the fish a little bit where you can't see him quite so well, but glue strings everywhere. Okay. I'm gonna try something. Just so I can get it down a little bit better where I want it glued. 
I really don't want it to move. I have the feeling this didn't work at all. And it didn't. Alright, let me try something else. Everything I tried didn't work, so... <clears throat> I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, I know I want it all the way down this edge. And then turn in the corner just a tiny bit both times. Now this is a dual temperature glue gun, so we'll, <laughs> we'll work with both kinds of glue sticks. Wow, really, really loving how that has turned out. Just some <clears throat> chipboard pieces for the mermaid, which was from a kit that I purchased. Then the, everything else is the resin crete and a tin. So there you go. <clears throat> I've used, wow, I've used some alcohol ink. I've used some of the Vivid Ultra Metallics. I've used some of the Finnabar waxes. And I've used embossing powder. Wow. Alright, there you go. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, all the, everything I used will be listed in my Amazon shop. Um, except for the resin kits. I will try to put a link down below where those are from. Alright. Like I said, thank y'all so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye for now.